All right, well, that was a great piece on the Telluride AIDS Benefit, a wonderful locally grown organization that helps AIDS patients here as well as in Africa too. Anyhow, I'd like to welcome Peter Bell here with us to the studio. Thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Well, first off, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you ended up here in Telluride and your involvement? Sure. My day job back in Washington, D.C., is I serve as executive director of an affordable housing organization. Uh -huh. And so many years ago, the year before the conference center first opened, I was invited here uh, by John Birchmore, who was executive director of it pre-opening, to take a look at bringing a conference to the conference center. And in fact, <laughs> I did that very next summer when it opened. And we were the very first uh, event in the conference center, our Summer Institute for Affordable Housing Developers, okay. an event we just did last week on Martha's Vineyard. But in any case, John knew his customers and said to me, I want you to come out and take a look at Telluride and come be my guest for the Jazz Festival. All right. So I said, you're good, John. You know <laughs> your party. So we came out that year for the festival, and it's been a love affair with the community and the festival ever since. So the Telluride Jazz Festival is originally owned by the Telluride Society for Jazz? Well, it was originally owned by some individual entrepreneurs. And in 1992, the entrepreneurs that were handling it were facing their share of challenges. Uh -huh. It's quite difficult to produce a <laughs> uh, festival in this environment generally, but also a festival that has a brand of music that is more or less considered to be urban music, mm -hmm. to be out here in southwestern Colorado. Yeah. Um, so it was a challenge. So they struggled, and they learned that they could get community support by creating a nonprofit. So in 1992, uh -huh. they created the Telluride Society for Jazz. All right. And the ownership of the festival was transferred to the society. So the society has been the presenting organization ever since. And what is the mission of the Telluride Society for Jazz? Well, it's to bring music, and we describe it as improvisational music because that's really the basic element of jazz. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's art being created right there live before an audience. Yeah. You know, when you think about classical music, the music is being performed live, but the music is written down. It's played the same way every time it's played. Yeah. Jazz is never the same twice. It's free form and... Well, yeah, it's free for this, this structure, but it, but it is highly improvisational, highly interpretive. Um, so the idea is to bring that type of musical entertainment and education to the Telluride community. Mm -hmm. And we do that first and foremost through a festival, but also we have a lot of educational programs that go on this week in conjunction with the festival. Uh -huh. And we also do some events throughout the year. And our goal is to do more and more of those events throughout the year. So now one, one big change, um, so two years ago our staff, we had our own dedicated staff, and our executive director, Paul Machado, retired. Mm -hmm. And there was a question about how to proceed. And the board decided that maybe rather than maintain our own staff, we should find a good production partner, which we found in SBG Productions, who, as you know, produces the Blues and Brews Festival and mm -hmm. does a first-rate job. As well as the Durango Blues Train. And, and the Blues Train. He's got a lot of experience. Right. <laughs> so we partnered with them. So we have a public-private uh, a joint venture here where we are the public entity and they are the private entity and uh, we work jointly to produce the festival and we and last year was the first year that they that took was it the on. first year under that and they did a great job for the first year and we see the results already this year with ticket sales running probably about 50 percent higher than our best year ever already oh, that's for this awesome. year that's yeah. really great. Well, some of that, I'm sure, is due to the lineup. Who do we have coming this weekend? Oh, boy, we got a great lineup. We have Bruce Hornsby, mm -hmm. who uh, I'm a jazz guy. I'm not really, uh, I haven't really paid that attention to the rock world for probably 30, 35 years. <laughs> but it's been interesting to me to see the reaction I get to Bruce Hornsby. Everybody I mentioned, jazz people, people that aren't necessarily into jazz, Dead are heads. very excited. <laughs> Deadheads, right, right, right. And uh, so we have uh, Bruce Hornsby as our headline, and people okay. are very excited about that. I am too. And what day is he playing? On Sunday or? Sunday? Uh, you got me on that. The exact <laughs> we can look time. it up. We'll look it up. <laughs> I'm an in the moment guy, I, you know. Just like jazz, <laughs> so, right? Right, right, right. Irma Thomas, who is a uh, soul and blues singer out of New Orleans. Yes, yeah, uh, in her in New 70s Orleans. and a uh, great personality. Carl Denson, who of course has uh, played in Telluride many times. 
uh, fun bopping saxophonist who uh, recently toured with the Rolling Stones. That's right. Um, Crowd favorite for sure. Everyone right. loves How can you not? Jamo's jazz band. Jamo is a drummer who uh, I guess is best known because he was a drummer with the Allman Brothers for a number of years. I heard an interview where someone said if it wasn't for Jamo, the Allman Brothers would be Leonard Skinner. Oh, that's funny. Because <laughs> he's uh, yeah, in the jazz. Yeah. And like all of this improvisational well stuff. he drives he's a driving drummer and that's that's what you want in a drummer uh, we have a whole bunch of groups that are really kind of uh the new jazz scene that are attracting young people to jazz venues all around the country bad bad not good seen them around um uh cory henry who um has been uh instrumentally involved uh, no pun intended with snarky puppy uh -huh. And uh, which is very popular. Snarky Puppy is probably one of the most popular groups in jazz today, and they are bringing out young people to jazz venues like we haven't seen in years. Has Snarky Puppy played? Tillage? They have played this festival, say, yeah. On... Yeah, we can't afford them now. They're so <laughs> popular. In fact, they did 12 shows at SF Jazz in San Francisco recently, and oh, they wow. sold out 600 seats a show. That's incredible. Six nights in a row, two shows a night. Yeah. So. Jazz isn't going anywhere. I feel like it's, like you said, there are these new bands that are coming up and introducing younger people to the genre. Yes, and they're very interesting. They're steeped in the tradition of improvisational music, but their influences are much more broad. They're mm -hmm. really world music. Uh, they're rap, hip hop inspired. Some are kind as of well getting, as getting jazz into inspired. electronic, right? Like a lot of electronic. Is yes, kind of very much so. That way a little bit too. Right, and what I think we're seeing is that Young folks have a new approach to music. You know, like I said, I'm a jazz guy. Young folks don't say that. They have an omnivorous <laughs> interest in music. They like all kinds of music we're mm -hmm. seeing. So uh, that's what's so exciting about this festival. I think uh, Steve Gumbel and his team have done a magnificent job of really doing a very broad mix. All right, well, last question. What are you personally most excited to see? Well, I'm most uh, excited to see Bruce Hornsby because of the reaction he's got to everybody. But, you know, I love everybody, and of course, I have a pet favorite, the Telluride Jazz All-Stars, who just started rehearsing an hour ago this morning. That's and awesome. we have a great lineup this year. Good. Right. All right. So t check out the Telluride Jazz Festival happening this weekend. It is starting on Thursday for patrons. Tickets are still available at telluridejazz.org. Peter, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Pepper. And now let's check out a profile piece on the View Bar and Grill at Mountain Lodge.